So, Jose, let's let's just first start with um, the uh, California's 53rd congressional district. What can you tell us about uh, this district? Absolutely. Uh, the California 53rd district in San Diego County is actually one of the most progressive districts in the entire um, in the entire county. Um, it is actually the central portion of San Diego is actually the highest one of the highest concentrations of uh, Bernie, Dern, B- Bernie donors. Um, and actually, the 53rd actually turned out 48 percent for Bernie in the primary. Um, the eastern northern portions of the district are very highly concentrated of veterans. Um, and it is. Um, it is a community that is really underserved in our in our in our district. And then you also have the southern portion, the southeast portion of the district, which is a very high concentration of Latinos. So it's a it's a very highly diverse district between all demographics. And uh, it is it is highly progressive as well. So so that's kind of the district in a nutshell. Um, OK, and it's and actually the second most populous district as well in, in the entire state of California. Oh, is that right? Wow. OK, so that's uh, yeah. it's obviously it's a big district. And um, the 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 district is currently represented by uh, Democrat Susan uh, Davis. Um, Correct. And and I think when we scheduled this interview, you were going to be challenging her in the uh, Democratic primary uh, that turns out to not be the case. Uh, w- what is what has happened? Well, uh, Susan Davis has uh, decided to not seek reelection as of a few days ago, um, which was very shocking um, to a lot of people. Um, but what I what I believe is that we've been pushing her on the issues of uh, Medicare for all, the Green New Deal, education for all, student loan debt for forgiveness, and bringing them home, uh, bringing the troops home with dignity. And we've been we and and we've also been supporting imp- impeachment hearings uh, or inquiries as well. And we moved around the Green New Deal uh, with the help of the Sunrise Movement and 350 earlier this year. Um, and then she was starting to get pressured by Medicare for All. So I believe that our pressure and the way the district is, is, is really shaking out, I think that they were afraid of being, you know, Joe Crowley um, and, and an AOC coming in and just taking the seat away from a sleeping Democrat. So I think they jumped ship. So people like Sarah Jacobs, who just announced recently, who is a oligarch, she is a billionaire as to the Qualcomm fortune, um, is now running for the seat after she just got defeated in the 49th district up north and now was shopping around for the 52nd district when Representative Scott Peters was, was thinking about running for mayor of San Diego. Um, but he decided to not do that and stay in a seat, and now she has just jumped into this race, which I think it must be nice to have millions and millions of dollars to be able to just move around wherever you want to go. That's, um, so that's I, convenient. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, very convenient. Very convenient. So you've grown up in this district, is that right, for the most part? Well, for the most part, I, I got here from the when I when I served in the United States Navy um, in 2006. So since I was 20 years old, I've been in this district. Yes. Um, so originally, I was from the state of Texas. Well, and, and let's and let's talk about. I mean, I don't generally go into um, uh, people's uh, you know backgrounds too much. I mean, it's, it's relevant mm-hmm. to the extent mm-hmm. that you've had a you know that folks have a you know set of life experiences that inform who they are today. Yours are uh, pretty unique. And um, yeah. I mean, tell us about that, because it's it's a fascinating story. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know, I grew up in the in the state of Texas, um, and it was actually interesting because when I was younger, up to the age of five, we actually grew up in quite a, uh, with a little bit of affluence. You know, we had the pools, we had the tennis courts, we had a huge house. Um, but my father was actually dealing with, you know, dealing drugs and money laundering. Um, so all that money was ill gotten. Um, my mother eventually was like, you got to quit this. And he didn't. So she left. And then the law caught up to him and he went to federal prison, thus leaving my life for about seven years at that point. Um, then I also then we moved to a small town in Texas um, called Mineral Wells. Uh, it's like 12,000 people at the time um, where we went from affluence to living in one house in my grandparents' home, spanning seven people, spanning three generations. And me, my sister, and my mother were living in one bedroom in that house. 
Um, and what was interesting about that as well, it was also a very predominantly white town. So it really wasn't very nice to have Jose Caballero as your name um, because the schooling was very discriminatory. They didn't allow me to be gifted and talented. They didn't allow me to do any of those things. Um, so even with all that, I still grew up conservative. Um, and after I pers- uh, persevered through the discrimination, persevered through, through the education system, taking college classes while in high school to catch up to my peers, I was able to get into the nuclear engineering program for the United States Navy, where wow. I served six years as a reactor operator. Um, and then that's what brought me to San Diego. And once I started going to school and I actually took philosophy and understood what an actual valid argument was, that's when my conservativeness started to be challenged. And then I went independent. Then I went like diehard Democrat. And now I'm a progressive Bernie Pratt. So so it was a very, very long journey. But that arc did happen. Um, and now, you know, since then, I, you know, with my political science degree, I've been running campaigns across the county, even one in Connecticut. And then I I am now a small business owner for a political consulting firm where we run field grassroots field campaigns for candidates across the county. Wow. I mean, that's just a a, that is a a fascinating story Um, that is incredibly varied and and, and impressive uh, as well. Um, And so let me ask you this. I mean, when when you when you look at um, in this county and as you know, and I think. When people juxtapose your description of the county and your life experiences, it's quite clear, you know, how you match up with this incredibly diverse county. You said, uh, you know, a huge, um, uh, significant, um, uh, you know, the highest concentration of uh, Bernie contributors in in 2016, but also a uh, mm-hmm. a strong contingency of uh, of vets in the uh, in the community mm-hmm. uh, and Latinos. I mean, in in some respects, it seems that you have shared experiences uh, or shared a perspective with just about um, you know the the. Uh, all of the major elements of this uh, community, I imagine this was um, was one of the reasons why uh, uh, Susan Davis may have gotten a little bit nervous about running against you. Um, let's talk just a little bit about how you think those different experiences that you had, whether it was understanding, you know, uh, you know, and, and obviously you're, you're five, so you don't fully understand what's going on with your, your yeah. father at that time. But the idea of having your father go away. Um, and mm-hmm. having to move, uh, with your mother and restart, uh, your life, uh, being mm-hmm. in a, um, you know, in a, uh, you know, a fairly a difficult environment in school where, uh, you know, uh, uh, kids can be cruel and certainly in terms of, uh, racial issues, uh, that can be a problem. And then into the Navy, I'm just curious as to the, those different experiences that you had, um, what, wh- you know, how did that that shape you as you're going through there? And how do you think that addresses a lot of things that might exist in your uh, in in your community? We'll take a break soon. And then when we come back, we'll talk about specific issues. But I'm I'm curious just from a yes. from a value set. So so from a value set, one thing that I that all that all that life experience is that I've had to fight for everything in my life. I've had to fight. I've had to prove myself. I've had to prove my my intellect. Um, I've had to prove my strength. I've had to basically go against the grain of everything that everybody was telling me from the point from high school when they were telling me you're either going to join the military or just going to go to community college or just get a job. No one was telling me to go to four year university. Right. So it was me that went into the Navy and said, give me the hardest intellectual job that you've got. And I persevered and I fought for that. And it was very difficult going from mediocre schooling to one of the elite you know, military schools in the entire country and having to persevere through that and make making sure that I had to break through um, from from the military um, of dealing with the traumas and the abuse that the military is is ingrained into the system itself and having to b- develop a thick skin to be able to emotionally cope with people who don't have your best interests in mind and want to see you suffer. We uh, having to, to, to persevere through and weather all of that and then coming out of the military with that sharp, sharp edge that I had, which was which which 
which, you know, most would say PTSD or transitional issues, I had to also persevere of coming back in the civilian life and being accepted again as another type of human, which is a veteran that that has to deal with the, the traumas of an abuse that that exists within the military structure and coming back from that. Also losing two uh, shipmates from suicide, you know, was another traumatic issue with me because I have lost many um, and, and have had many com- conversations with veterans that I served with, people who, who have served that I did not serve with, that have been dealing with these issues for a long time um, because we're losing 20 veterans a day in this country. And for me, knowing the deck plates, knowing the emotional traumas as enlisted will allow me to give me a clear eyed picture to talk to the vets on, uh, and one fourth of all the homeless vets in the entire uh, in San Diego are veterans. So, so, so that's another major issue. And then going into politics, going against the establishment, when I ran for, I actually ran for San Diego City Council when I was a Bernie supporter. They ousted me because I was a Bernie supporter, and then they supported the Hillary, the the person who was supporting Hillary at the time. So even going to convention, dealing with being the minority, uh, and during that 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 entire progressive movement that Bernie mm-hmm. started in 2016, having to deal with that as well of being the outsider and not dealing and not playing by the rules by way the party says they, they were supposed right. to be. We, it was, my entire life has been a giant opposition <laughs> to well, everything that, that exists. So that's kind of what developed me as a human, as, as the person that's going to go against the system with courage, because that's all I've been doing my entire life. All right. Well, Jose, we've got to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to hear more about yeah. specific policy proposals that you support. I'm Sam Cedar. This is Ring of Fire Radio. We'll be right back with Jose Caballero, who is running for Congress in uh, California's 53rd District in just a moment. 